Hi, this is Karen at Snickerdoodle Designs. I'm here to talk to you today about my droplet templates and a full bleed page. I mentioned that I use full bleed pages when I upload my scrapbook pages to photo sites for printing and you asked me exactly what that meant. So let's take a look at that today. Here we are in my publisher software and although this is the software of my choice when I do photo books, I'm often frustrated by the fact that you're limited to the templates that they offer you. If I wanted one photo, these are the only options that I have. If I want four photos, these are the options I have. And although they are different, they aren't very exciting for us scrapbookers who like to give a little bit more interest to our pages, whether that's a lot of embellishments or very few embellishments. We typically want more than these options. So here we are back in Photoshop Elements. This is a page I created following our vacation last year. I knew pretty much what I wanted to do and I knew I wouldn't be able to create it with the standard templates that come in most photo book software programs. So I did create the pages in Photoshop and then I uh, saved them as full bleed pages and I will show you that in just a moment. But what I was able to do in Photoshop that I wouldn't have been able to do in the standard template software would be to add these type of embellishments, these little things that make such a difference. Instead of just plain text, I was able to, um, on a white background, I was able to put it on this vintage looking paper that went very well with the castle that we were at. Little tiny bows, and this was a pre made cluster from a kit, and that's a great way to use those pre made borders and clusters. Here's another kit, and the same thing. I had some additional little elements, these staples holding the photo and the text together. I had a nice big title, a cluster, pre made cluster, and then a frame that I could put on this page. And so, what I did next, let's go ahead and close this one was once I saved this as a PSD or a TIFF file, just in case I wanted to change anything later, I went ahead and flattened the page. And to do that, all I have to do is right click on a layer and go flatten page. Ask if I wanna discard any hidden layers, which I do, click okay. And now I have one page. It's not in layers anymore, it's just one page. I go ahead and save that as a JPEG and then I'll show you how we use that as a full bleed drop-in page in My Publisher. Here we are in the My Publisher software. Because I specifically designed my droplet templates, sets 5, 6, 7, and 8 for My Publisher, and I talked about full bleed pages, many of you have asked me exactly what that means. So let's go ahead and take a look. Let's show you, I wanted to show you what the um, book looks like before we actually get into the software. You can preview it in different ways. They have different page views down here. And then you can click on the arrows here to go to the next page. So this is the front cover. And just you can scroll through and decide if the pages are exactly how you want them, if you want to rearrange them, change them or anything. And I'm sure that's the same with any software. So let's go ahead and start a new project. This one I have already saved, so I don't have to worry about that. So I'll just go new file, new project. And I'm going to just choose photo book and choose next. I will choose custom publisher because I want to build the pages myself and next and I will use the classic hardware. This is the 11.25 by 8.75, while they do have other uh, sizes that you can explore as well. Classic hardware, next. I like to use the storyteller myself. The wedding and the others um, templates down here have um, pages on them for you or embellishments on them for you, and we don't want that, so I'm just gonna go with storyteller. And next, I have a book jacket on mine because I like that. Um, it, obviously, you don't have to, and if you don't want that and you don't want any of these premium ones, uh, the linen one I have done, there's no extra charge for it. 
and it's very, very nice. So I'm going to go ahead and choose linen. You can um, choose different fonts, and at this point I just say next, next, next. The only thing I have ever added is the cover, which I do like, as I said. I did try the flat pages once. That is a premium option, and I, for the cost, I personally didn't um, think it was worth it, but you might. So I'm just going to go ahead and click through here. So now we are ready to start our book. This is where we will bring our pictures. We're on step number one, get photos. And you can see this is a preview of my computer structure. I have placed these photos that I'm going to demonstrate with on my desktop, and so they're already in the file. But otherwise, you would just navigate through your folder structure to your photos how you normally would. So let's go ahead and back up to my desktop. They were in this London folder, and I click on that to open it, and these are all ready to go. So all I need to do is click on the first one, click on the last one to select them all, or I could just bring them on down one by one if I want, but I want to bring them down here because this is where all of my active photos are going to be. Once I have all my pages my uh, photos here, or my pages, I go to step number two, which is design. This is the front of the linen cover. If I, linen cover book, if I had a photo to put here, I would go ahead and do that right now, but we're not going to take the time to do that, and I'm just going to click next. The inside cover is always blank, and this is the first page. Whenever you mouse over, you can see that the box or the photo area becomes active. Because we save these as a full bleed page, or it's just one JPEG, we want to drop this in as if it were one photo. So we need to come down here to Page Layout, click on that, and when we click on one photo, these are the options that we have. And I'll take just a moment to show you, if you click on the down pointing arrow, you have all these other options. If you decided you wanted to use their templates, and you could have these options. And sometimes on my, in my books, I will intersperse scrapbook pages with their own templates. If I know that I'm not going to put any embellishments on a page, it's basically just photos and text, I'll go ahead and use one of their templates just to save time. So let's go back to the one photo, and this is the one we want right here. No captions, and you can see it goes edge to edge. Let's go ahead and close that. And I just grabbed a few pages, so there's no, no uh, first, second, third page here I see. Let's just go ahead and drag, drag. Breakfast starts in the morning, so let's just drag that down here. And that was our English breakfast that morning. And that's all you do. You just drag this down. Make sure that there is nothing in this guide that's important. This actually was made to be a left page, and so it is a little close to the um, gutter for me. So if you decide that you don't want the page there, you can just bring it back up. And let's go ahead and put this one down here. And this was designed as a right page, and this is fine. You can see that there's nothing in here that's going to be cut off. Everything looks fine. Click Next. Again, click on the page to make it active. Click 1, and go ahead and bring your page back down. And now you can see that this text looks fine there. Obviously, you're going to want to think about this ahead of time, to make sure that you're doing right pages and left pages appropriately. And this will be a one page again. And let's go ahead and drop it in. And that's all there is to it. Once, and obviously this was meant to be a left page as well. If you don't want to bring it up, you can just bring another one down or release and it'll replace it. And this was made to be a right page because you can see the text is fine. But that's all there is to it. Once you save your page, once you create your page in Photoshop and save it as a JPEG, 
all you have to do is just drop it in that one page layout. Continue through by hitting next. When you get to 20 pages on the classic, if you have 21, 22 pages, you can have the option of adding another page. They charge you, I think, a dollar a page after one, after 20 pages. I'm not sure, but I think that's right. So you can add as many pages as you like. When you're done and you want to preview it, click on number three for preview. Let's go back to the first page. And you can look at one page or you can look at two pages. And I don't have a page over here, so that's why we're not seeing two pages. There's two pages, it's blank. And you can also do it as a slideshow. So uh, you can explore this software and see if it works for you, but I just wanted to show you how simple it is to use and mainly what a full bleed page is because if you're using my publisher or Shutterfly or any of the software, soft photo software sites, a full bleed page is a full bleed page. It will work on any, play, any photo site. But uh, again, because I've had questions, I just wanted to show you and give you a tour of my publisher. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me. My contact information is on my website, snickerdoodledesignsbykaren.com. Thanks so much.